Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. This is part two of lesson 2.5. We're going to use more algebraic properties in logical arguments. The first new property that we're working with is something called the reflexive property. And there's three different cases that we could have. We could be looking at a real number, we could be looking at the length of a segment, or we could be looking at the measure of an angle. So for a real number, let's say that we're dealing with some real number a, then the reflexive property says that a equals a. So a number is equal to itself. If we're talking about the length of a segment, let's say we've got segment ab, then the length of ab is equal to the length of ab. Again, it's equal to itself. Same thing for angles. If we've got angle a, then the measure of angle a is equal to itself or the measure of angle a. Our next new property is called the symmetric property. And again, there's a real numbers case, there's a segments case, and there's an angles case. If we're looking at two real numbers, a and b, if a equals b, then the reverse has to be true, b equals a. If we're looking at two segments, a, b, and c, d, if the length of a, b equals the length of c, d, then again, the reverse has to be true. The length of c, d equals the length of a, b. And if we're talking about angles, two angles, let's say angle A and angle B, then if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then the reverse, the measure of angle B, has to equal the measure of angle A. Our last new property is called the transitive property. And again, there's a real number case, a segment case, and an angle case. For the real number case, we're dealing with three real numbers, A, B, and C. And our transitive property says if A equals B, and b equals c, then a has to equal c as well. For the segment case, we're gonna have three segments, a, b, c, d, and e, f. If the length of a, b is equal to the length of c, d, and the length of c, d is equal to the length of e, f, then the length of a, b equals the length of e, f. And for angles, we're gonna have three angles, angle a, angle b, and angle c. If the measure of angle a equals the measure of angle b, and the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C, then the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C. In this first example, we're given this diagram to take a look at, and what we wanna show is the length of AC is equal to the length of BD. And we're gonna set up a T-chart a lot like we did with those equations that we were doing in part one. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna have our equation, and on the right-hand side, we're going to provide some sort of reason why. Now the first thing we always wanna look for is some sort of given information. So I'm taking a look at this picture trying to see are we given anything? And what I see is a congruence marking on AB and a congruence marking on CD. So what that tells me is the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. And our reason there is just going to be given because that was told to us in the diagram. Now, eventually, we're building towards making this AC segment, and we're building towards making this BD segment. Well, if we look at AC, AC is made up of two smaller segments, AB and BC. And if we look at that BD segment, that's also made up of two smaller segments, CD and BC. So what I want to do is, in our equation, on both sides of that equation, I want to add on this BC segment. So then our equation says AB plus BC equals CD plus BC. And our property that lets us add something to both sides of an equation is the addition property. Now I want to take a look at this AB plus BC a little bit more. We're adding two small segments together and when we do that it creates a bigger segment. So this AB plus BC, what we can say is if we take AB plus BC that has to equal our big segment, which runs from A to C. And that's using our segment addition postulate. Two small segments added together gives us the big segment. And I want to do something similar with this CD plus BC. If we take a look at those two small pieces and put them together, we get a bigger segment. So CD plus BC is equal to the big segment that runs from B to D. And again, that one's our segment addition postulate. Now on the left-hand side of our equation in number two, we had AB plus BC. And in step number three, we just said that AB plus BC is the same thing as AC. So in step number five, we're gonna use our substitution property. I'm going to replace the AB plus BC with what it's equal to AC. 
And I'm going to do something similar on the right hand side. We said that CD plus BC, well in step number four we've said that that's equal to BD. So we're going to replace the CD plus BC with what it's equal to and that's our BD. And our reason for both of those steps is our substitution property. We replaced something with something else that it was equal to. And then we're done. We wanted to show that AC was equal to BD and that's what our last step says. In our last example we're given this diagram to take a look at and based on that diagram we want to show that the measure of angle EBA is equal to the measure of angle DBC. Now we're looking for some given information in the picture and what I see is angle 1 and angle 3 have that arc in there meaning that they're congruent. So what we can say about that is the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 and our reason there is given. It was told to us in the diagram. Now eventually we're building towards these bigger angles EBA and DBC. So I want to take a look at the smaller pieces that make up each one of those angles. So in step number two let's first look at angle EBA. So EBA is made up of the two small angles two and three. So we could say the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle EBA. And our reason there is going to be the angle addition postulate. We're taking two small angles, adding them together and getting a bigger angle. I'm going to do the same thing with angle DBC. I want to look at the two small pieces that make up angle DBC. So if you look, DBC is over here on the left hand side. That's made up of angle 1 and angle 2. So we could say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle DBC. And again, that's our angle addition postulate. We're adding two small angles together and getting a bigger angle. Now I want to focus on this third step that we just wrote down here. We said that angle 1 plus angle 2 equals angle DBC. But earlier we said that angle 1 and angle 3 are the same exact thing. So right here where we have angle 1, or the measure of angle 1, I'm going to use the substitution property to replace that with the measure of angle 3. So then our equation says the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle DBC. And again, like I mentioned, that's our substitution property. We replaced something with something that it's equal to. Now I want to take a look at the equations in step 2 and step 4. Both of those things have the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that equals to information from the other side of the equations and we're going to set those equal to each other. So the first piece is going to say the measure of angle EBA that's going to equal the measure of angle DBC. That's our transitive property. Both of these things were equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 so we can set them equal to each other. And then that's what we were looking for. We wanted to show that the measure of angle EBA is equal to the measure of angle DBC. That's what our last step says. So we're done with this one. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.